How you doing, YouTube? Matt with Massive Beer Reviews, back with yet another review. Uh, J and H. J and H. Uh, we have John from Ye Old J Ampersand H Beer, yeah. which is um, in northeastern Pennsylvania. If you're ever looking for a place that has um, good beer and you want to buy good beer, mm -hmm. definitely go check it out. We have a wide variety of uh, Belgian ales and uh, American beers. There you go. Yeah. And other ones. He has Canadian beers and yeah. Belgian beers and English beers. <laughs> and Yugoslavia and Lithuanian. Yeah. Hey, don't you know Lithuanians. No, I'm serious. It's good. I have some good Pilsners. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we're going to be doing some reviews tonight. Uh, and right now we're going to be doing the breweries Seven Swans Swimming, um, which is a Belgian-style quadruple ale. Um, John is... Well, John thinks he's a brewery expert, so I'm let's, I'll defer to him on this information. What do you know about this beer? Well, I'm the leading expert in this county, I'd say. I don't know, maybe. Okay. Um, <laughs> this is the uh, first beer from the series, as I understand it, that doesn't have any additives such as fruit or spices. It's just a straight-up Belgian quad. And what's the ABV on that? Do you know? Uh, the ABV will be a nice 11%. It's like every single one, it makes 11 on that, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, it's pretty cool. I mean, brewery in general, they're, they're a great brewery. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, I don't think I've ever had a bad beer from them, unless you count the countless infected beers that they tend to put out there from time to time. We had a few at a part, uh, well, a party the other day. What do we have? The, uh, the coconut. coconut. But it was like 17% alcohol. Yeah. But still, I mean, they have a, they have a track record of, of, uh, tainting, yeah. uh, beers from time to time, which is fine. I mean, it happens. I mean, every brewer, if you've ever made beer, you, you know, uh, that can happen. So it happens. But, um, yeah, I mean, they don't make a bad beer. I've had oh, beers. Oh, well, they did the, the facility now that they have uh, all a the separate facilities. So now they're going to be A-OK. -okay. If anything happens now, it's going to be curious, but it should yeah. be, yeah. But, uh, I mean, they're just, uh, everything they do is pretty awesome. So, uh, hopefully this is much the same. Um, as far as what it says on a bottle, Family Rue, uh, the brewery. Uh, let's see. Unfiltered, bottle conditioned, seven swans of swimming, Belgian-style quadruple ale. The seventh verse of our 12 Days of Christmas series of beers showcases rich, malty character of Belgian-style quadruple. Happy holidays. Uh, let's see. 11% alcohol. And in the back, we have a little story. Oh, uh -oh. I love the little stories. A little toilet reading. Uh, seven Swans Swimming is suitable for aging up to five years. Soon after the release of 12 Drummers Drumming, when cellared properly, best stored and cellared around 55 degrees in a dark place, yeah. ideal serving temperature is 50 degrees, please pour carefully, leaving the yeast sediment behind in the bottle. Best served with a tulip or wine glass. Best of down. Down, down. So, um, let's see. That's about it. Um, Brewery's labels are always awesome. Something about them. They're uber badass. They're a little bit classy. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're just, I just dig them. The design, you know? the designs are pretty uh, rigid, you know, nice yeah. and structural. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of that kind of, cut, you know, fancy cut out label thing. So whatever. That's what I did um, in um, art class. And this is, let's see, this beer is a whole month, it's a month old on the news. That's it? Let me see. Yeah, 11.07. Oh, today, wow. Today is December 7th. So, they so it's a month old. They shipped that out within three weeks probably, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not too shabby. Yeah. Uh, John Lake's a brewery. Mm. That's the understatement of the century. So let's see what we got going on here. Ooh. I like many of fine... It's darker than what I thought it would be. I like many of fine uh, European ales just as much. I think European beers are the best. But I mean, I I'm, I think that you kind of do too a little bit. Uh, each one has their pluses and minuses. I would say, you know... For your classic non barrel aged stuff, I definitely go European, but yeah, I, think, yeah. I think Americans have a better grasp on barrel aging. Well, the bourbon barrel's uh, kind of an American idea. Yeah. Yeah. Well, but you can't have, uh, well, you, what is it? You can't have, uh, you can't have scotch without bourbon, right? Is that how it works? How does it work? No, really? Is, is that what, what, what came no, first? Like yeah. chicken or the egg? Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um, darker than what I expected it to be. Really? No, it's a club though, right? Yeah, but it's like, I, I, it doesn't have that kind of creamy fluffiness, and which brings a little bit light, more lightness to it. Yeah, it's got a nice uh, amber. It's, 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 like, it's, it's, it's a deep it's brown. Dark. It's Me medium deep brown. With a tint of red. Yeah. No, we're not supposed to use lights. That's that's illegal. It's a no-no. you got to hold it. Nah, that's a bunch of malarkey. Away from the light. Right? I love holding shit up the light. Um, the head's kind of going away pretty fast. I mean, it's 11%. So I got expect. a nice finger on there, though, when I pour it. Yeah, it's got a nice... Nice, uh, I don't even know what color you call that. It smells to me like a, uh, what you would expect from a typical American-made quad. It smells a little boozy. Yeah, it is. It's just like a, 
what I would expect. And just fruity, really fruity. Mm hmm. Almost like fresh fruit, though, not so much even dried. It's pretty fresh. It's, it's, yeah, it's fruitiness it to it. Old, it's um, a sharp fruit. It's not as much like a dark, like, um, like ripened uh, dark fruit. It's more like a fresh, uber fresh, like, popping fruit. Mm hmm. A little Belgian yeastiness going on there. Look at that lacing right there, brother. Mm. I love that, huh? Delish. I want to get in this because I've been waiting for this one. Pretty solid. Kind of fruit. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's smooth. definitely, it's definitely an American um, take on the whole style. Just that ton of fruit, a little more fruit than I expect. It's like really super fruity. Malt goes pretty clean, very smooth. Carbonation, carbonation's like perfect on this mm. with the creaminess on it. Yeah, I wish it was a little bit denser though in the mouthfeel. Mm -hmm. Like it's not, it's got a nice creaminess to it, but it doesn't have that fluffiness that you'd expect. Yeah, the body's not quite there. It's it's pretty high, though. It's like medium, I'd say. It's medium. Yeah, but it doesn't have that, you know, that kind of cloudy, creamy density that a lot of, like, your coveted Belgian quads have. The European craftsmanship. <laughs> it's in I'm the sorry. water. I'm sorry. It's in the dirty, dirty European water. I like to say European craftsmanship. That's my thing. That's my beer, though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I'd actually go Belgian Strong Dark as opposed to Belgian Quad, though. I wouldn't call it a quad. Yeah, you know. I mean, you're kind of, you know, you know, whatever you want to call it. What the saying goes, you're kind of. <laughs> I'm gonna kind of go along with you on that because um, well, there's a lot of ones that could kind of be considered the same thing almost. It tastes. Yeah. It tastes like you know. There's that series, and um, a lot of breweries will put out like special Belgian quads or Belgian darks after Christmas, like Guten Carlos's Emperor, mm -hmm. or certain ones like that, like special releases. Mm -hmm. It tastes like that. It tastes like a winter Belgian release. Mm -hmm. with almost, not with the kind of winter spices that you typically... So, not like a not like a St. Bernard's where it has a ton of like allspice and bullcrap in it. Mm -hmm. But it's like got that like kind of winter Belgian strong darky like a like a like a, a castle winter or like a like I said a Guten Carlos Emperor Blue. It's like to me it's more like the, that. The the Grand Cru of the of the Grand Cru essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's nice. That's it's the super. grand. That's the grand crew. The grand crew, bro. Yeah. Yo, yo, yo. But yeah, it's a nice beer. Um, um, now we're paying uh, twelve or thirteen, maybe. What was it? I picked it off the bottom. I think it was twelve dollars. Twelve, about eleven ninety nine. So this is um, yeah, about an average value for a quad. Yeah, yeah it's about normal. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, let's see. I mean, you're talking. As far as what what you have in the taste before you get to all that bullshit, it's just a ton of fruit. It is like a lot fresh, of fruit, yeah. fresh fruit. A little bit of that kind of Belgian yeastiness. Actually, I said it was a little bit boozy. Um, it's not all that boozy, actually. Uh, come to think of it, now I've had a couple sips and it's pretty easy drinking. There's no, not yeah, to it at all. You can tell there's a you can tell there's booze in there, but it's there's no heat to it whatsoever. Mm. Um, mm. No, no, that that that's that's actually a perfect way to say that there there is no. Alcohol at all in this, like at all, like uh, now that I'm thinking about it, there's no alcohol in this. It, it, I, I see that's the thing I can tell it's there, but it's no peat to it. No, 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 no. You know, um, it's not but like it's, it's not like it's not like I'm drinking this going wow, this tastes like I could tell this is a 10, 11, 12 percent beer. You could tell it's not like it's you know some beers you drink and you're like it's twelve percent, but it tastes like a six percent beer. And you're yeah, like, I'm gonna get screwed up real like, fast. Like Tiger Hop or or Beasel Buff. Yeah. Yeah, Beasel Buff. Um, Together hops. Everybody omits them from that. We'll, yeah. We're gonna have to give. You ever have some of them? Oh uh, yeah. The extra is twelve percent. Tastes like it's like five and a half. Yeah, I forget what twenty did. I think I reviewed one. I don't know if I ever posted it. Though. Did you really? I think I'm gonna get a bad one. The, sing, the, the, the singing blonde. Well, most of their beers are like uh, kind of like tinge of sourness to them. They, yeah. They're just brewed that way. They're all like sour mm. a little bit. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I mean that's pretty much it. Other than just your typical Belgian strong darkish characters, you know, decent mouthfeel. There's a nice amount of, like you said, a nice amount of carbonation in there, which is nice. And it's just overall really nice beer. And it uh, is. But the thing about this too, th these were both like you know this is 11. percent This is only a, this is like easy to drink for a quad though. Mm -hmm. you know? And it's like the same thing as the last one that we had. These are both easy. They're not really s like big sippers at all. They're just. This is a really nice beer. Yeah. But it, it lacks a wow factor. Yeah, and that's and that's the thing. I completely agree. But now, it's so fresh that it, you should thing. lay it down for a while. Here's the thing: we got to figure out now what series is coming about better—the vertical epic from Stone or the Twelve Days of Christmas. I think that I 
like these beers as a style more than the uh, than the vertical epic from Stone. You know the O two O three O four O five. Mm-hmm. Did you ever have them? Or, I, mean, I don't know all of them. I haven't had all of them. Um, I, I, if you've watched any of my reviews, I, I have a few breweries. Not that I shy away from but I don't run to, and Stone's one of them. So I don't have either. a ton of Stone oh, stuff. Oh, hey, we got another IPA out there. Well, not, yeah. not just that. Even their beers that should be hoppy, they overhop, it seems like. Yeah. But one of the better beers I should, be, talk, I should be talking shit because I drink breweries that make the same thing anyways. They're all like, like quads or barrel yeah. beer, yeah. But one of my, uh, the Stone Vertical, the 888 that we had at a tasting that we oh. had. Oh, was that was the, the anniversary. That was the anniversary. Oh, was it the anniversary? Yeah, was it? that was actually good. Yeah, that was good. Yeah, that was nice. But I mean, uh, rating wise, I would probably give this, uh, probably give it like an 87. I'm going to go for probably the same as I gave, yeah, an 88. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's eighty-seven. It's really nice beer. It's 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 a beer that if you if I buy one of these and throw in my cellar and drink it in two years, I'd probably give it like a ninety-three, ninety-four. That's my guess. We're gonna we never know. Two thousand nineteen. There you go. Mm-hmm. Five years. And then we're gonna drink them all in one day. Mm-hmm. I have all of them. Robert broke into the uh, partridge. We spent quite a few dollars more than we should have on that one. We drank it already. So yeah, yeah. Such is life. We'll see what Beer's happens. meant to be drank. Yeah. Now we're um, missing the first one, though. We'll see what happens. But um, mm-hmm. availability, like I said, it just hit the shelves in this area, so availability is kind of a weird one. So I give it, like, give it availability right now because I know where to get one. If I want to get one, I give it availability of seven. We're in northeastern Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Now, and this is, like, beginning of December. And value, like you said, like 12 bucks. This is kind of awesome for 12 bucks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you're talking about twelve seven fifty for 12 bucks of a beer like this that is really nice. But it's just going to get better with age. So I give it like a, a, an 8 on the value scale. The minimum price of a decent 750 is like 10 or 11. So yeah. They're not really, yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing, like with the brewery, it's... It, 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 yeah, mean, their prices are everywhere. They're like 10... No, the Hot and Rot's like seven ninety nine, and then they have beers that are like 40 or more. Well, I wasn't yeah. going to yeah. say that. What I was going to say is with the brewery, you're, you, you're almost guaranteed you're never going to get a bad beer unless it's infected. You yeah. know what I mean? It's always, it, it's always doable. Yeah. yeah they're, they're, in the worst case scenario, you're going to be you're going to get a really nice beer. Best case scenario, you're going to get a home run. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's not like you're, you're kind of gambling with it. You know you're going to um, get something nice. So if you do buy one, you know that $12, $20, $30 is going to go to something nice. So mm-hmm. that's the point I was trying to make. Um, but, yeah, very good, man. There you go. Uh, another it. review in the books. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, if you guys enjoy Belgian quads or Belgian strong darks and you like to see Americans take, take on it, it's worth giving a whirl. I mean, I like it more than we did. You know, well, here's the thing. Like, Some people like what's it. your yeah. what's your favorite American quad? Do you uh, have them? Uh, probably. Uh, well, I, I would say the Brother Thelonious, maybe Brother Thelonious, because that really tastes like it's kind of Belgian-y. It tastes like it could have been my top Belgian. three. Yeah, Belgian quads would be Elsmus. Oh yeah, I forgot about them. Um, oh, the fourteen's out now. The decadence I just saw. Yeah, I had it. But that was box. Was it good? Yeah, I reviewed it. It's, it's on the internet. It's brand new. It just came out, right? No, I got it like two months ago. Oh, two months ago. Um, and uh, let's see, Ale Smith, mm-hmm. um, uh, Boulevards, uh, their six glass. Uh, oh, 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 the one with the devil on the front. Yep. Yeah. And, and uh, Schlafly. Oh, really? See, I'm surprised about that one. Schlafly. See, that seemed a little one-dimensional to me. I don't know if you. Schlafly. Okay. Sh- no, 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 the Boulevard. Schlafly. Well, the Schla- here's the Schlafly's thing. Schlafly's though. better. Yeah. That's, well, here's that's the thing. Good. Though. That's a good. The beer. Boulevard one I had yeah. was a couple years old. Okay, so it's kind of cheating there a little bit. But. If you want to, if you want to do a fresh one, I got one that's about maybe a year old. We could bring that over. There you go. Yeah, oh, yeah. If you're into Belgian quads and you like to see Americans take on it, it's worth giving it a whirl. And if you're a fan of the brewery in general, just give it a whirl. Exactly. If you're a fan of the brewery, you're going to be drinking everything because you're yeah. a member of the society. So there you go. You all know it. Oh, uh, don't even get me started on that bullshit. You all. Know anyway, it. Um, another review in the books. Hopefully, you enjoyed the review. If you did or you didn't, or somewhere in between, please leave a comment in the comment section below. If you'd like, check us out anywhere else on the internet. You can on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're more way more active on Instagram, so if you're going to check us out anywhere, check us out there at Massive Beers and all three of those places. Uh, John, they can find you at? I'm at, uh, on Facebook at JM for Sign H Beer, JNH Beer, and I'm also on uh, Beer Menus, and I have uh, JNHBeer.com. If you search on uh, Google, you'll find a lot of different posts. I got you know, quite a bit of different coverage online. Stuff and stuff. Yeah. Stuff and stuff, yeah. There you go. A couple, etc. So, uh, yeah. Another review down. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the review. Hopefully you enjoyed a nice beer right now. Hopefully see you next time. And our cameraman. Cheers. Yeah.